okay just for the sake of uh, reinforcement I will uh, define that the ecosystem is the environment uh, the plants where uh, which are growing in that environment the weather which is there right uh, the temperatures uh, the humidity many factors come around and then the animals which are living in that environment all of them all connected together is what we cause an, uh, call uh, as an ecosystem right now for our unit one we have uh, 4.1 we have this uh, Sonoran Desert right the Sonoran Desert now as I told you that uh, there are two things to look at number one it's a desert right so it is going to be uh, dry uh, it is going to be hot right uh, we usually associate uh, deserts as hot areas it is going to be uh, rough uh, terrain right rough or sandy right it is going to be uh, a little bit abrasive or or er erosive environment you can say very uh, harsh environment to survive right and are there going to be fewer plants right definitely in deserts you rarely see plants right and definitely when there are lesser plants there are uh, fewer animals right so deserts uh, have very limited ecosystem uh, when it comes to uh, rest of the other biomes right the deserts are the most uh, you can say the simplicity to understand right hence we're starting the Sonoran Desert so in the Sonoran Desert when we are looking uh, into the main animals that are there then uh, we can see that there are you know uh, a big horn sheep right that's one uh, then we have the mule deers then we have uh, mountain lions then we have foxes then we have coyotes you know they all manage to survive these animals they they can adapt to these harsher or drier environments right and when we look at the plants then uh, since it's a drier environment so we usually see uh, uh, cactuses growing around right uh, prickly pear cactus which is most common you know this this large one these uh, spiky ones right we usually see the simple uh, I mean what can I say uh, let me just make a drawing like this right so these the spiky ones these are the uh, prickly pear uh, cactus right these are most common and these usually provide the habitat uh, for the animals now what's a habitat it's a place where a certain animal or or uh, a species starts to live in right so many many species of animals they are actually thriving upon these uh, prickly pear uh, uh, plants right and how so they make holes in them they provide water because uh, these are succulent plants right these cactuses uh, all the cactus family right uh, whether they're from desert or the uh, you know uh, suburban areas they they all have this one common ability to uh, store large amounts of water so they uh, being dry it takes the atmospheric water as well as the little water it can get from uh, you know the ground and it stores it and then it uh, helps in survival of the uh, animals which are living around right uh, these animals right so they do uh, take the sap or, or I know it's very hard to drink the cactus sap it's very sore but uh, they manage to survive right so uh, these are the ma basic uh, features of the Sororan uh, desert it's uh, what you need to look for uh, rest of the detail in the book uh, is just an introduction of how uh, different animals are connected together how they're surviving you can make a food web if you want to make out of that context uh, but usually uh, in the papers uh, you you're not just going to get one desert there could be any other uh, ecosystem provided so I'm not just going to stick to the uh, desert terrain we have aquatic biomes we have terrestrial we have uh, arctic tundras right uh, the snow snowy areas right then we have the uh, the forests so all of these uh, are very complex very diverse ecosystems and usually uh, many questions come around from uh, you know uh, different any kind of an ecosystem so uh, the the question is the same the idea is the same that whenever you're studying an ecosystem right the first thing you need to look at uh, are the conditions right what are the conditions in that ecosystem which we discussed for the desert uh, is going to be dry hot uh, it's going to be rough uh, it's going to be fewer plants and a uh, fewer animals so it's a very small or uh, a less complex uh, ecosystem we're talking about if you look for the forest then we're going to find thousands of species of uh, maybe just the birds or, or the insects right uh, so that's the key uh, in this case uh, let me just make one uh, food web for you as an example let's just say we're talking about uh, coyotes right uh, this one. okay sorry yeah coyotes right so uh, what are coyotes these are like uh, 
they they look like foxes but they're a little smaller and they're faster and they're more adapted to the desert terrains foxes actually cannot survive the desert they can, they, uh, they live in the greener or uh, you can say a kind of forest area right uh, coyotes uh, thrive to survive in deserts right so the coyotes uh, actually live, live upon uh, lizards right uh, you know the lizards which are uh, lurking around in the desert and those lizards uh, thrive upon insects right so okay all right uh, insects right and those insects would definitely be uh, let's just say if it's a grasshopper or something so they might be dependent upon some plants right so this is how the ecosystem one uh, food chain is developed in the ecosystem now if you talk about the webs then obviously uh, we have mountain lines right as well in the Arizona deserts right so when we talk about the mountain lines definitely it's not gonna eat the lizards or, or the or the plants it's gonna directly you know feed upon uh, these coyotes right so since it's a bigger animal it's a cat so it's gonna eat this uh, coyote uh, for food so uh, this is one of the food examples one one uh, main feature I discuss about uh, desert is that uh, desert uh, life is usually uh, slow uh, in day and it's very active at night right uh, usually the hunt uh, goes around in the desert at night because it's a bit colder so the animals f uh, have more uh, you know uh, uh, you can say a better uh, temperature to work at and they can come out of their holes and they were you know instead of uh, trying to avoid the heat of the Sun in in the desert they just you know come out at night and then they hunt so active hunt uh, at night so this is the main feature of desert other biomes definitely have their own uh, you know uh, times of feeding times and and whatnot but the main feeding time for deserts is usually night so it's very dangerous to be out there in the you know desert without any proper equipment right okay now this was just a 4.1 is just an introduction to uh, what uh, ecosystem is right now this is uh, the presentation uh, that was there right I'm just going to overview uh, this, uh, this presentation let me just zoom it up okay yeah so uh, what is an ecosystem we just defined that it's like a bustling community where the plants and animals throw an ultimate party right and uh, they exchange snacks which we uh, call we can say energy or food right and uh, they have playing roles uh, they have certain jobs their daily routine right uh, and they uh, create a very wild and interconnected adventure right so they all live upon each other depend upon each other to survive right so uh, uh, if you remember the activity uh, done in the class they, they asked you to you know uh, play some of those those tags on the respective biome so if you look over here this is more of a, a, a green a very uh, beautiful kind of an environment over here we have mangroves mangroves are coastal areas where uh, you know the you know the land meets the salty waters it's very close to the sea and uh, over there as you can see the trees are having very long uh, roots like it's like they're having legs right instead of roots so the roots extend very deeper into uh, the salty water coast right and the trees rise up uh, and provide this breakage for smaller uh, fish and smaller organisms to thrive which uh, would not be possible if the you know mangrove was not there also there's a life threat that when in case if there is any flood or something right then these mangroves actually stop the pressure or reduce the pressure of the incoming uh, waves right and they can help in, in uh, reducing the effect of those uh, maybe the tsunami or or, uh, or uh, a thunderstorm or something right so these uh, uh, this is one example of an ecosystem then uh, we have more examples right they they discussed many in which we uh, discussed about the Arctic right if you remember this polar bear they were talking about right so in the Arctic uh, Ocean that's it's an aquatic biome where the polar bears are the patrolling uh, agents right they they patrol around they keep the ecosystem and and check uh, the seals they they feed upon the fish and then these polar bears uh, they feed upon these uh, you know seals even the whale right uh, uh, the whales they feed upon these seals so it's a big 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 uh, ecosystem uh, you can go through these uh, you know uh, contexts but as I said uh, ecosystems is not bound to just to your book or uh, to what I've uh, uh, what these girls have actually collected over here right so uh, 
you need to be uh, versatile whatever the case is given in the question you have to answer accordingly right so whatever the conditions are there for the ecosystem you can judge by the picture right as you can see in this picture uh, you can see the aquatic biome at the bottom the fish right the crabs are there uh, you know and then these are there are birds then there are plants and then there's a crocodile as well at the ba back I didn't see it first right so uh, that's scary okay uh, so these are all the aquatic uh, you know um, amphibian or aquatic life is there so there are, uh, there's an uh, amphibious habitat there's an aquatic habitat and there's a plant habitat uh, then the birds are also there so that's a bird nest as well somewhere so uh, these uh, define the features right so you can check by the picture uh, so whatever the picture is given in the question we'll review a few uh, at the end of the lesson as I said uh, you'll uh, have a better idea we'll be discussing some of those uh, issues so you need to understand what affects the food chain and how uh, different uh, these uh, you know features as they discuss if you remember the rice paddies right uh, the story of the frog that they were telling so uh, different features are there different animals thrive and different plants thrive and they work together uh, to you know keep the ecosystem balanced right so th there are different ecosystems they have their own requirements they have their own plants and uh, it all depends upon the questions that you're supposed to be answering uh, what kind of an ecosystem they're talking they will first give you the introduction of the system and uh, probably give you a picture as well right so you you're you're dependent upon that uh, given context and the picture to be able to answer the questions right uh, am I clear okay if at any point uh, you feel that uh, I'm going a little too fast <laughs> since it's a revision do let me know right uh, I usually record uh, lessons at the same pace so um, I'm probably at the same pace because of the digital version right okay uh, then uh, we discussed about intruder right first I want you to define the word intruder for me yes so an intruder would be uh, someone or, or in our case let's say some animal right uh, that is introduced into an ecosystem right uh, a, a certain ecosystem let's say uh, rice paddies right it's full of frogs and plants what if I uh, invite a crocodile there right a small one so it's gonna eat out all the frogs you know and and uh, probably the whole ecosystem would get disturbed because of one croc right or uh, I can add uh, some some bacteria there and that might just affect the whole ecosystem maybe kill all all the living animals or, or pro probably decay the plants right so intrusion is when something uninvited or unwanted uh, is allowed to occur into an ecosystem we'll see the effect of uh, intruders usually uh, when we talk about intruders we're, we're discussing uh, statistical analysis right in most of the cases right so we we uh, we try to identify how uh, the introduction of uh, one external species is affecting uh, this ego or or you can say an ongoing ecosystem right let's just say this this ecosystem is there you you see some deers a fox uh, some butterflies um, you know a squirrel is jumping around and the flowers and the trees what if uh, I just leave a croc here as well right it's gonna eat uh, these uh, small animals the rabbit you know the fox so it will disturb the ecosystem right and they won't be able to uh, grow or, or uh, proceed or populate this area any further because of one crocodile because it's the uh, you can say one of the prime feeders uh, in most of the ecosystems right um, very few uh, and there's uh, probably an example like humans hunting <laughs> the crocodiles other than that the crocodiles are the top hunters right uh, when it comes to the amphibian environment right when there's water and land both involved then uh, crocs are one of the top uh, tire hunters right uh, then you have probably you would have cheetahs right uh, which are you know mostly for the land not for not good for the water but on the land they're very good uh, in seas you have got whales right very big uh, fish which eat the smaller ones and then we have sharks these uh, are, are, you know organisms in each system they, they regulate the population so what is important is the population right uh, pop count right I usually call it the pop count right so uh, population is really important uh, when you're concerned with an ecosystem population of ecosystem right of a system I'm just going to call it a system right so uh, in that case we devise many studies so uh, for a topic like this there are statistical questions and uh, then there are just uh, you can say descriptive questions 
where you are supposed to look what is happening in this image as you can see they gave if you remember uh, uh, um, you know Manur gave this uh, uh, fun example that if these uh, beavers they're trying to build a dam for themselves or a boat uh, someone else just takes over their house and you know lives there and now they're homeless right so this is one way of the intrusion now since they are not in their original home so these two beavers will not be able to populate let's just say if some other species or some other animal had crossed here right crossed into their uh, house then they would be able to populate because they have a safer place to live in uh, these beavers now homeless cannot stay anywhere else right so they will, won't be able to grow any further or, or uh, have a family or populate the area right so their population will be affected so such questions only require you to just uh, again look at the given description or the given context and then answer the questions right so uh, I hope uh, this is understandable please don't get get into this uh, uh, prolonged context that they placed that it was for their own uh, review and research right so uh, I'm now going to rush into the final topic which is bioaccumulation then accumulate right accumulate means uh, gathering right as you suggested so gathering means something that is gathered over time, right? Let me just add this uh, to your uh, definition. You said gathering, I'll say gathering over time, right? Over time collecting uh, something is what we call as accumulate. And when we talk about bioaccumulation, that means those processes which uh, accumulate over time that involve biological organisms, right? So bioaccumulation uh, is basically you know uh, a magnification or collection or uh, you can say uh, I'll use more words right magnification right or uh, accumulation as I said or uh, intensification something that gets intense over time right uh, intensification please don't mind these uh, DION words right I use them more often so uh, three ways we can say it's something that's collected over time that's bundled up together and becomes something and over time uh, it becomes very very uh, intense right so let's just look at this that uh, what is bioaccumulation we have this uh, this guy over here right this guy is uh, spraying a pesticide right let's call it uh, DDT right it's one of uh, the insecticides uh, that are used and why we use insecticides because we do know that insects like grasshoppers and uh, you know other uh, plant eaters they actually destroy crops right and if we don't uh, get rid of those insects which which enter the field and multiply very fast uh, our whole field is going to get damaged and our fruiting trees right like these will also get damaged and we won't be able to get uh, food for the you know public right for humans or maybe bigger animals so we have to uh, stop uh, the population or restrict the population of such insects we cannot actually get fully rid of them we can but that would be a very dangerous process so we use insecticides right uh, to get rid of those insects in, in specific areas right for example in the house we use those mosquito sprays to get rid of mosquitoes right uh, the same way we use uh, these uh, DDT right uh, or the insecticides uh, to get rid of uh, these insects uh, which uh, damage the crops right so what really happens when we spray these chemicals which uh, this sprayer is obviously using some uh, spraying mask or something for his own protection now he's protected at the time but uh, once the spray goes out right uh, due to the rain and uh, due to other uh, factors all of this uh, falls onto the ground right through the leaves when these leaves which are sprayed on when they fall onto the ground due to rain all of this gets absorbed into the soil right and then it becomes available uh, for leaching leaching means it becomes part of uh, it drops down moves down or through rainwater goes into the groundwater right and uh, it may be biodegraded right into some other toxic sub substances right or probably uh, the plants which are dependent upon groundwater are going to uh, take that infected water which is now infected or you can say poisoned with the DDT right will uh, absorb that water and will generate fruits so over time uh, 
many 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 let's just say uh, I sprayed it like 10 times right so every time when I went out for the field for this DDT spray I I personally got uh, uh, you can say infected just once one person get it infected but once all of that chemical accumulates on the ground from different uh, number of space as I said let's say 10 times over 10 times all of that will be collected up by these trees and all of that chemical will be now uh, available in the fruits right so uh, the output the final output would be uh, food uh, uh, in infested I'm not going to say infected I'm saying infested sorry I wrote infected all right right infested that means it is filled uh, with DDT right so it would be intensely uh, you can say accumulated in those fruits and when those fruits are going to be delivered to other people now many many people are going to get infected uh, with this DDT or will uh, be facing harmful effects of these uh, you know insecticides or the pest pesticides that we use so the use of these needs to be very 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 carefully done and more so uh, the the factor of bioaccumulation must be kept in mind that the excess or uh, you know the harmful effects are minimized as much as possible obviously there's uh, at times there is no possible way of getting rid of it uh, we do get some dosage in our food that is why you you know the idea of the organic uh, plants or the organic fruits and I mean other fruits are also growing on trees what is the difference be between normal fruits and uh, organic fruits it's actually the use of these DDTs right in the normal fees they use DDT so that they're uh, uh, output or you can say the amount of fruit that is produced is not affected by the insect because they kill the insects but as of uh, the defect they they uh, induce bioaccumulation of the DDT in those fruits which we eat so they are harmful sort of right uh, at least not in smaller numbers but for long-term usage they are dangerous may cause cancer right uh, but if we look at uh, organic fruits they are grown in an environment where insects are prevented rather than killed using these DDTs, right? They use uh, maybe nettings or uh, they use very, uh, uh, you can say, uh, temperature-based uh, environments or some, uh, you know, uh, lights or something to prevent uh, infestation of the insects into the their, their plant nurseries. And hence, when they grow fruit, uh, those actually grow in smaller the number. Uh, due to the limited environments right uh, unlike the open farms right which have uh, very more you can say much more intense environment to grow in uh, those produce lesser yield and hence they are actually more expensive right uh, the only positive factor they would have is uh, the avoidance of this DDT and that only depends on you know the honesty of uh, the seller eventually right so uh, which uh, I duly don't uh, trust anyone in Pakistan right so I just probably would like to grow my own fruits right so uh, do you understand the idea of uh, DDT involvement or uh, bioaccumulation of these insecticides how they can be consumed are we clear okay uh, let me now just uh, go through one example over here you see uh, can you see this picture or should I uh, zoom it up a little bit uh, you can see that in just a minute let me just magnify this a little bit yeah M uh, a little better now okay now uh, over here as you can see there is a there is some factory which is releasing uh, pollutants or chemicals into the water right um, and also out there uh, chimneys right uh, the one that is released in the air is going to collect or deposit it with the rain when it is going to rain the water will take all those chemicals down with it right it will clean up the air but the chemicals will come down into the sea or this one the, the this yellow stream that the arrow is there it is now released now these are smaller quantity right the sea is so big uh, and uh, the, the the chemical that is produced is is very little compared to the size of the sea right so it will take us million years probably if such factories existed and, and worked it will take the million years to infect the whole sea but what uh, is it's not the actual amount that they release is important but the bioaccumulation of it right how so uh, when they release these chemicals let's see these are point pollutants right very small particles of uh, polluted or chemicals that they're releasing 
small uh, you know planktons are going to uh, you know snack on them and then those planktons are going to get uh, eaten by a bigger uh, you know ones in the chain then we have you know carnivorous zoo planktons uh, probably crabs or something then we have the fish then the bigger fish and then goes all the way to the you know orcas or what we call as the killer whale now if you can see the quantity of the dot it was just one dot per organism right but as uh, the the food chain uh, w went up you can see that more and more is getting accumulated depending upon the size of the uh, you know uh, uh, animal and at the final orca which is very big since it's not going to just uh, survive on one salmon uh, in a in a lifetime it is going to be eating maybe uh, hundreds of salmons each day depending upon the size that it has salmon is a very small fish compared to orcas so orcas have a very big diet as well as their killer fish so they're gonna eat a lot of salmon and let's say if one salmon can contain maybe uh, nine or ten of these dangerous chemical molecules then the orcas are going to be collecting a lot more each day right by eating those infected salmons right now this is what we call as bio accumulation at its best right and in terms of graphical understanding this is the best way I could have found on the internet to to display how bio accumulation actually works right are we clear now now let's move into the uh, questions and then um, I'll be off uh, you'll have to uh, just review these things you are added in the notebook right you do have access to this don't you you have it but yeah the digital notebook yeah it's on the digital notebook I am using the digital notebook I'm not uh, using the presentation tools right I don't like using presentation tools anymore I mean notebook is the best okay now let's look at this question right the drawing, uh, the the drawings based on the fossils show, and uh, I don't know what you call this animal, right? This is some sort of a dinosaur, perhaps, right? Whatever it is called, <laughs> please don't mind, right? I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, speak out a very wrong uh, name of this animal. He might just bite me back, right? And then we have a woolly uh, mammoth, right? On the other hand, so uh, this is uh, this dinosaur, right? Lived 120 years ago, right? Uh, 120 million years ago sorry right and then uh, we have these uh, woolly uh, mammoths uh, woolly means they, they've got these wools right you have seen mammoths in cartoons right don't you have you okay that's fine you know what mammoths are right uh, and you probably have seen some dinosaur cartoons as well perhaps or, or movie right so if you look at them now look at the picture this is what I meant that most of the time it's the context and the picture that is defining you in your science right so pictures are very important in science papers so look at this picture at the first one that the, the dinosaur one what do you see in the background how's the environment yes yes very good and what do you see on the mammoth side yes now now let's look now let's read through the question these animals both lived in the same parts of the Europe, right? Perhaps back in the time, not now, but earlier, but at different times, right? In different ages. One is 120 million years ago and one is just 4,000 years ago. Both animals are now extinct, right? We have found their DNA, we have studied their DNA, and we have found that the, the environments they would have survived in, right? Does the fossil evidence support the idea that Earth has cycles of warm? and cold periods of time has nothing to do <laughs> with mammoth or the dinosaur <laughs> right so the question is simply asking you to look at the background of the picture you see ice over here right and you see a, a beautiful temperate uh, uh, you can say environment at the back so the answer would be so what's the answer yes so yes it is so we will write yes it does provide us evidence at one point Europe is frozen the other point it's suburban and it's green it's uh, it's like a rainforest as you said right give two reasons for your answers now I hope you can express right in the picture uh, there's a rainforest for the dinosaur and 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 the mammoth picture uh, there's uh, snow at uh, in the background right so we've got snow uh, versus uh, rain forest right 
Got it? Okay. Now, uh, moving on. Explain if the fossil evidence supports the idea that age cycle takes a long period of time, right? And uh, we can evaluate uh, the difference of time is that it was 120 million years, right? It's a very long time. And then there we have 4,000 years. And even now, Europe is now no more icy, right? So it does take a lot of time. So from 4,000 to maybe perhaps a hotter time, it is going to come around, right? Maybe in maybe in next 10,000 years, Europe is going to be uh, like this beautiful uh, green, hot uh, rainforest, right? Uh, compared to the ice-cold, uh, barren uh, kind of a snowy land, right? So yes, the evidence does provide given the timeline, right? So uh, from timeline, uh, we can say that each cycle takes long p long time. Right? That's it. As simple. We can just compare the the given times. Right? Understood? Any any uh, issues with this question? Okay. Now now these are the questions. These are the types of the questions you will be asked for ecosystem. Right? Okay. Now next one. Uh, look at the food web for an Australian grassland ecosystem, right? Now, Kewol, uh is this cute little animal that you see, right? Uh, you know, they're, they're uh, native of Australian uh, uh, areas, right? And uh, what they feed upon, now this is a food web question I told you, right? So, the kewl, uh feeds on the lizard. Uh, the lizards depend upon the insects, and the insects eat trees, fruit trees, right? And then on the other hand, we have grass. Uh, which uh, the small birds are going to feed upon, right? And those uh, small birds, like uh, we we have those uh, tiny birds, like uh, what we can say, I forgot the name of that tiny little, you know, uh, which uh, you can say, I can, sorry? No, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm trying to draw that <laughs> little bird. They have long beaks and many tiny little birds. They flap very fast. I forgot. I just forgot the name. It was top of my uh, the top of my tongue, and now it's gone. <laughs> if you remember, what these small birds are called? Do, can you recall? Very good. Yes, thank you. So hummingbirds. Yes, I forgot. Right. So hummingbirds. Oh, you you got it from the from the drawing. I'm probably very good at drawing <laughs> or probably you're really good at guessing stuff right okay so uh, we've got this hummingbirds right and uh, those are small birds these curls they they can jump upon trees they're very quick they're very nimble uh, so they uh, you know jump and grab these small birds as well and then there are dragonflies somewhere in the context which uh, feed upon these uh, smaller insects but the curl is going to eat them too. So the master hunter for this kind of a habitat, uh, this green land, right? We have got trees, we have got grass, so it's a greener land. It's a uh, lush green area. We've got small birds, we've got insects, lizards. So, you know, it does create a picture in your mind what kind of uh, the ecosystem we're dealing with, right? Does it? And on the top, they have told you it's a grassland, right? So now let's look into the question. Cats are an invasive species in Australia, right? So that is factor number one. Cats eat small birds and lizards, right? So let's highlight that, right? And you should do the same in the paper as well. So uh, let me get the orange one. So cat feeds on uh, the lizards and small birds. So these two are now infected or, or you can say affected uh, sorry, uh, I, let me use the right word, affected, right? So these two are affected by the presence of cat, right? So the cat is going to feed upon them, right? Explain the effect the introduction of cats has on the dragonfly population. Now, <laughs> look, if you look at this uh, over here, we've got uh, small birds which don't really affect the population of dragonfly, but uh, neither do the lizards, do they? Yes, there, there isn't much of an effect because uh, neither of the two uh, consumes the dragonfly nor uh, the absence of the lizards or the small birds 
is going to affect the insects but the insects are directly affected uh, or taken or, f or fed upon by, by the cure right so maybe some increase in the population is expected right so I would not uh, entirely uh, nullify the effect because the insects uh, are going to now increase in number right so I will uh, discuss this as there are no more lizards left because the lizards are now eaten uh, by the uh, you know cat small bird I'm not considering at this moment because it's not related to the dragonfly right I can state that right uh, small bird pop as I said pop count will not affect right because that is irrelevant that is not part of the dragonfly's food chain but if you look at uh, the lizards uh, how they are relating because the lizards are uh, eating the insects and when there are no more lizards left then the insects are going to increase in number right and when the insects are going to increase in number now dragonflies are going to have more insects to feed upon right and more food for them hence the dragonfly pop count will increase so I can say that the dragonflies pop will increase as less lizards will result in more insects right am I clear okay <laughs> moving on to the next question insects eat fruit right now let's go back insects are eating fruits right uh, then now let me just raise all of this because now we're done with case one right okay uh, insects eat uh, fruits and cules are also killed by the toxic substance explain why I just explained the effect of uh, DDT right so if uh, the insects are eating the fruits that means if I spray DDT if you remember to prevent fruits from getting damaged some of the infects, uh, insects which will die are now consumed directly by the cules right and if the cules are going to uh, eat those poisoned uh, insects then obviously cules are also going to get uh, killed by the accumulation of poison in their body and after a while not immediately but after a while they will uh, get uh, adversely affected and then they will uh, also die due to this toxin right so the answer would be bio accumulation of insecticide right very simple answer one liner if you want just give the point and the score is yours uh, are we clear okay last uh, now this is a statistical question right these were two theory one was a uh, descriptive right I told you about the image description these kind of questions can come in the in the assessment then we have uh, these food web questions right related to food web they're, they're also very descriptive and then we have these statistical questions right so these will uh, uh, you know require you to uh, think in the statistical or the number or the growth of the populations right so in 1900s only lead red squirrels lived on the island right uh, at the end of the year gray squirrels were introduced into the island look at the maps they show where the red squirrels and gray squirrels lived on the island so let's go into the key so this is the area where there are no squirrels right now initially if you look at the island all of that is red squirrels right then these are uh, gray ones right I'm going to write G so uh, gray squirrels were introduced after a while and probably they are the invasive nature right so this seems to be invasive uh, and since they were not invited they were placed there intentionally right for any experiment or probably uh, alteration of the ecosystem we do alter ecosystems all right to control certain uh, factors uh, maybe uh, to, to control a uh, growth of maybe uh, uh, to, to control the population of some insects we, we added some aggressive uh, squirrels over there right it may not be just harmful but it may be uh, at times beneficial not for the ecosystem but for humans uh, to, uh, to alter the ecosystem right by adding an invasive species right so they now if you see this is gray this is tiny little bit of red and 
this is the area where there are no squirrels right so uh, from this imagery right uh, by the understanding of this graph the size of the areas where the red squirrels and gray squirrels live changes between 1900 to 2000 right so let's look at the question so from 1900 to 2000 over 100 years this is the 50 in between right uh, describe the changes in the size of these areas red squirrel area right that is reduced is that so yes okay what about the red and the gray squirrel area both both no the word both is uh, we are just going to use the word changed right it changed over time it's changing we one is growing one is uh, reducing so it's asking for both so we're going to just use a, a more political answer I, as I always suggest that changed right it is just changed we can we, if we say increased then it uh, nullifies the red and if we say uh, uh, decreased then it is going to nullify gray so we need to satisfy both of these right so we're going to use a word that is going to help us uh, define which is just the change right? it changed over time which we can see right it's a valid answer and then finally gray squirrels only area right that increased right as you can see the bla black area increased the gray area reduced right and they both changed over time okay suggest two reasons why the changed changes happened and I just told you this that probably uh, the gray squirrels were an invasive species so they invaded the red squirrel area they, they, they you know push them out aggressively out of their houses uh, by the way squirrels they fight a lot if you can see their videos uh, you know they are amazing fighters they're fun to watch right I, I would love to pet a squirrel at, at my home right you know uh, uh, but uh, you know it's a big 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 responsibility to <laughs> pet an animal right uh, okay so uh, what changes uh, why these changes happened right uh, invasive species introduced that's number one okay what could be the other reason yeah native species couldn't defend right as simple so native couldn't defend if 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 uh, they were able to survive together then we wouldn't be having this black area we would rather have uh, a slotted area like this like lines as you can see this area they uh, actually forgot to discuss this but such areas represent uh, collection right collection means it is neither gray it is neither black so it is the gray it is the 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 combined area right so here is the collection which they did not discuss in the paper right at least not in this question right so uh, uh, are we understood that how we're uh, going to answer these questions 